Hi, this is Danielle, uh, and we're here with the cla classic, oh my goodness, I can't talk today, uh, the Classical Liberal Project. Um, I have Jonathan Casey here, the chair Hello. of the Classical Liberal Caucus, uh, and Teddy Gherkin, uh, also the chair of, uh, this is the uh, Libertarian Youth Caucus, correct? Yep. Great, thank you. Uh, can you... Can you start us off, Teddy, and just tell us a little bit about um, what you do there with the Libertarian Youth Caucus and kind of how you got involved? Yeah, for sure. Um, so the Libertarian Youth Caucus, uh, as it currently stands, is sort of the next generation of the Libertarian Party. We're working, you know, as the youth wing of the party with, you know, the state or the national, state, and local parties to really provide opportunities for young Americans to get involved not only in you know, spreading liberty in their communities, but actually engaging in, in real action and trying to make change in their communities. I know, you know, we as libertarians have a tendency to make, you know, millions of different groups. And I know that there are, you know, certainly many different uh, liberty geared student organizations, but the Libertarian Youth Caucus is the only one that is directly tied with the Libertarian Party, the only organization that's working to create opportunities, you know, at LP national headquarters, at state campaigns, local campaigns, all of that stuff. And really get kids involved not only in you know sort of like a book club libertarian capacity but in you know electoral politics and making sure that they're making their communities better how did uh so how did you get involved in the libertarian party i know you've been involved in california what how did you get in get started yeah for sure so it was probably during the 2020 presidential election uh because that was during the first presidential or 2016 i mean or no yeah 2020. <laughs> that was uh, the i know the years Jesus, it's three years since 2020. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah that's the yeah. Oh, yeah. It doesn't feel like yeah. it. First presidential election that I really uh, carefully tracked. And, you know, obviously Biden and Trump were not the best candidates. Um, and so I happened to, I knew about the Libertarian Party before that. I watched, uh, you know, some of the Libertarian Party presidential debates and I liked what I heard. Um, but, you know, it's pretty critical that I happened to see the Spike Cohen, the then vice presidential candidate, uh, was going to be speaking at Oakland. He was having a rally that was, you know, only a few miles from my house. So, you know, it was during the summer, I decided to go out, see what it was about. It was the beginning of the summer and the bus was coming around the country. So certainly some excitement there. But um, hearing his message really of not, you know, sort of devolving into these same, you know, duopoly, you know, making the world worse every election cycle, but really a new vision of hope. Um, you know, when you, when, you, when you listen to the 2020 presidential debates between Biden and Trump, it really sounds like the 2016 presidential debates. And, you know, it's probably a little bit more toxic now, but policy-wise, it sounds like the 2012 uh, presidential debates and the 2008 debates. And, you know, the, the Spike Cohen was really offering just such a such a new vision. And, you know, I already knew a little bit about the Libertarian Party, but I got inspired. So I started to come to the, the local Alameda County LP, uh, started to help on their social media, their communications, uh, all of that stuff. And then I heard about the Libertarian Youth Caucus and that sounded perfect, a high school student. Uh, <laughs> that's probably what I should join. Um, and so the LYC was founded in, in 2016 and originally existed sort of as uh, a caucus like the Classical Liberal Caucus uh, that sort of existed as its own little internal LP pressure group, right? Uh, advocating for, you know, young issues in the LP platform, pushing up issues about, you know, like ending the war and draft and national debt and all of that sort of stuff. Um, but the LYC also sort of experimented with having college and high school campuses, and that saw a lot of success. And so, you know, unfortunately, because the LYC didn't pursue a super uh, intentional connection with the party for, for the first few years of its existence, you know, you sort of had chapters coming and going um, until, you know, last summer when I was elected the chair of the LYC. Uh, and previously, I had been like the Pacific Regional Representative and the California chair working to get chapters set up there. Um, and in the in the West, we actually did see um, a lot more engagement with the party and a lot more chapters. And so when I was running for chair, uh, I think I just sort of saw that, you know, that's what we needed to focus on, right? That's that's where we're being most effective when we can be the youth wing of the party, right? Um, you know, I'm sure inside the LP, <laughs> everyone agrees that, you know, issues like ending the war and national debt and stuff are important. And, you know, there's a little bit of work with advocacy there and making sure that the party is keeping it at the forefront of messaging. But really the, the real value add for the young people in the party is making sure that we're growing the next generation, right? Of voters, of leaders, of party members, of volunteers, of everything. 
And so we relaunched last summer. Uh, everyone's super excited sort of about the transition. We got, you know, everyone on board talked to, you know, the chairs of, you know, all the major caucuses in the party, the chair of the national party, got the chairs of state parties on board. Um, and we launched or we relaunched at the start of this year, um, you know, getting and right now we're getting state organizations, you know, sort of reset up um, and making sure that we're, we're starting to get our first like the first real big wave of college and high school chapters set up, uh, getting all sorts of re resources out for them uh, to make sure that they can be as successful as possible. And then, of course, making sure that sort of every level of the LYC is working with their corresponding level of the LP to make sure that we're providing those opportunities. So, you know, on the local level, that looks like making sure that, you know, volunteering and phone banking is done with the local uh, LYC. On the state level, it means that when you have congressional campaigns, you know, we have candidates come and speak at colleges or, you know, when the presidential camps coming through doing that as well. Um, and then on the national level, we're already looking forward to the 2024 election, hoping to get, um, you know, some young young voices in, in the campaigns, getting our, getting our members uh, engaged in that, having the president and vice presidential camp come and do uh, college tours to try to get, you know, volunteers and donations and all of that. Um, and then working at a few uh, to, to be announced projects at uh, LP National Headquarters. So uh, what does it look like getting a chapter started at your school um, if you're just, you know, brand new and you're just like, oh, hey, I'm a young libertarian. I want to do this. Yeah, for sure. Um, so anyone who sort of comes into the the LYC, whether it's through meeting someone from the LYC, uh, you know, knowing a leader or just stumbling onto our website or listening to this podcast uh, is highly encouraged to, you know, sign up at uh, lycaucus.org slash join that and make sure that you're on like all the newsletters and stuff. So when we release like new opportunities, when we have like a new, new programs that are announced, new brochures uh, for use of like chapters or like any resources that get announced, we like blast it to the whole list. Um, but also when you join that list, you'll get connected with, um, you know, a leader uh, for you. So in, you know, all the states that we have state teams up and running right now, uh, you'll get an email from your state chair. Uh, if it's not, you'll get an email probably from me or someone else on our national team um, helping you to, to get involved. And so starting a chapter uh, is really as simple as sort of a signing up and then getting in contact and making sure that we can give you uh, all the resources that you need. Obviously, you know, on a, on a college by college and high school by high school basis, there's, you know, more that goes into it uh, for, you know, making sure that's an official organization. I know there are all sorts of, you know, campus senates and deans to get approval from. And, you know, if you, we can help you, uh, you know, make sure that you're following all of that on your campus. But on our end, uh, it's really easy. Just, uh, you know, there's like a little cover letter that you can fill out just to make sure that we know, uh, you know, the name, the contact, the school, right? So we can have it on our system. So if we have another person from your school that joins or someone near, we can refer them to you. Um, and then once you're in our system, then, you know, if you are if you don't have a state organization, then it'll probably be, you know, monthly uh, or, you know, bi-weekly check-ins from uh, the national team, if you have a state affiliate, it'll be weekly or bi-weekly or monthly check-ins from your state affiliate team. Um, and then, of course, all the resources and support and stuff flows down there. So we have an affiliate support handbook that has all sorts of uh, sort of the manual on how to like run a chapter, right? It has all sorts of ideas on outreach and the events that you can be doing and all of that. But then it also has all sorts of resources. There's like brochures, rap cards that are specifically designed towards young libertarian audiences. There's all, all sorts of stuff uh, for running that. And then obviously, if you need uh, so some of it is just sort of self-explanatory with the little uh, with the little loop that we have set up in the affiliate handbook of you know recruiting kids and getting them involved in campaigns. So once you read through that, sort of the basic operations loop should be uh, fairly obvious. But you know, with uh, sort of going beyond that and making your impact as meaningful as possible, those meetings with sort of the the leaders of the LYC that are meeting with a lot of different chapters and seeing what's working across the country. Um, will help to, you know, guide you. But that's more about <laughs> the operations of a chapter than, I suppose, joining. So, yes, as, a, as you may expect from a libertarian organization, uh, pretty easy to join, pretty easy to get involved. Right. How do you, you know, once people get involved with the organization, obviously uh, obviously at the college level, it's, you know, it's a four-year cycle where people are cycling in and, and now there's a lot, going to be a lot of turnover in that. How do you, how do you, how do you keep people getting more, you know, more and more people involved? And then what happens after college? Do you have a plan for, keeping them involved in the Liberty movement. What's, what's kind of the, the structure there? Yeah. So the idea of the LYC um, is that, as I alluded to a little bit earlier, there are, you know, sort of two, two main things that our chapters are doing. So the first is sort of, you know, spreading Liberty on their campus, doing, you know, like book clubs, informational nights, it's all that sort of stuff to get libertarianism 
out uh, to their community. Uh, but then the second is obviously, you know, integrating with the party, whether that's, you know, ballot access campaigns, door knocking, petition signing, phone banking, uh, you know, really anything that the state party is focusing on, you know, legislative calls, calling your calling your legislator, all, all that sort of stuff. Um, that's all really designed to get kids uh, really active and involved, not only in the LYC, but in the party. Because the idea is that we don't just want, we don't, because there, there are a lot of, you know, liberty focused organizations uh, and, you know, sort of the, the fatal flaw if you're not working with an organization like the LP that's making real political change is you either have kids that sort of, you know, are for libertarianism, don't really do anything, or, you know, you teach them that liberty is great and they should be wagging their finger at the duopoly, but then they go back and vote for them anyway, because they're not getting involved in the party. So the idea is that by the time you graduate college, uh, you or graduate college, you've been working in the LP, you've been, you know, making friends in the party proper, you, you know, you might be on some committees, you, you'll be active in your county affiliate, you'll have been on campaigns and all of that. And so really, you won't be a member of the LYC, you'll be a member of the LP. Um, and it's really designed for sort of that, that seamless integration into the party, because there is something important about having, you know, youth specific spaces and youth specific organizations on chapters. But it's also really important, uh, as you pointed out, because of the four year turnover cycle to make sure that we're getting kids, you know, involved in the party proper, because, you know, we don't we don't want to be promoting the LYC. The LYC on its own is, you know, technically a political organization if you have to ask our tax filings. But um, we're not running candidates. We're not a political party. So it doesn't really matter how many LYC alums there are. Right. It matters if they're actively getting involved with the party, if they're continuing to volunteer, to run, to be leaders, all of that. And so that's really what the program is designed to promote. Nice. My my youngest turns five on Monday, so I feel like my, the, I, my days of being in a, a youth caucus are well behind me. <laughs> but what's what's um, um, what's? I thought you were going to stay. Say you're about to start her early. Oh right, there you there you go. That that works too. Well, my oldest is nine, so only a few only a few mm -hmm. years away. But uh, what's the response been like, Daddy? Yeah, it's been really great. I mean, the the Libertarian Youth Caucus sort of functioning as the youth wing of the party is something that, you know, the LP has sort of desperately needed for a while because, you know, young volunteers, they're not just nice for the long term. I mean, obviously, if you want to blow up the liberty movement and get us, uh, you know, really get the ball rolling, you need to you need to get kids when they're, you know, in college and high school where political opinions are forming. So you can expose them to this new these new ideas that they probably aren't hearing uh, from those around them or those, you know, in the administration or teachers or whatever. Um, but also it's really immediately helpful as well. Because, you know, one of the lessons that we've learned from young Democrats and young Republicans is that their campaigns get a tremendous amount of support from college organizations and high school organizations. Because, you know, high, high school and college kids might not have a lot of money, so they're not going to be, you know, your donors bankrolling the campaigns. But what they do have is a lot of time and enthusiasm and a willingness to change the community. So they are, you know, door knockers or phone bankers or people working on legislative initiatives, getting petitions signed, all of that. And so... When we get you know a local organization set up and you know the local and state organization starts saying oh this can really help uh, on our campaigns then you know it's it's generally been a tremendously positive response because it's sort of addressing uh you know the full range of time periods that the lp needs to be focusing on right on what uh what kind of educational opportunities do you provide like do you help the students learn like what being a delegate means for convention or like what it looks like to get a bill passed or or you know run for office so that they sort of have an idea or uh are uh, are we does the libertarian party really do that and we're just kind of funneling folks to that yeah so the the lyc definitely is sort of so we're working on a number of sort of leadership training uh institute on institute's wrong word number of leadership training uh programs and stuff like that to get people ready ahead of convention. Uh, I know it's a, it's only a year out now, so we're, we're planning for that, uh, trying to get as many young people to convention as possible. And so we're definitely gonna be doing a lot of informational stuff about what it means to be a delegate, how you can get to convention, you know, sort of a, a very, very handholdy walkthrough of like how you, you know, get tickets to, you know, all of the stuff, how you, you know, get hotel rooms and like the block, how you make sure that you're signed up for everything, how, you, you know, you make sure you're credentialed because you gotta get in the day before and like make sure that you, you know, you show up. Uh, how to vote, make motions, like all of that stuff. Um, so we're we're working on prepping all of that sort of for the rollout of convention. Um, but sort of more broadly, to your point about you know how we get bills passed and legislative initiatives and stuff like that, that's where you know all the real leadership training is going to come in. And so we're still we're sort of in the in the finishing stages of making sure that we can get all of that stuff stuff set up. But what it's likely going to look like 
is sort of a regular-ish uh, like Zoom meetings or some sort of online platform where you can have sort of like questions or people, uh, you know, doing practice, mock interviews, stuff like that. And then a number of like videos to, you know, just be like basically instructional, like, oh, here's how you do, you know, phone banking. Let me walk you through uh, getting petitions signed. Uh, let's see how, you know, one of our sample advocates goes and does door knocking, you know, stuff like that. And then if they have further questions, uh, you know, we have a rhetoric one coming out about how you can talk about libertarianism to people, how you can focus on, you know, oh, if they're like a utilitarian, how you can focus on how libertarian appeals to that. If they believe in like, if equality is their strongest goal, how you can talk about libertarianism in that. And then, you know, if they have any, any lines of rhetoric that they've, any questions that people have come up with that are just like off the wall and they didn't know how to answer, right? Those live sessions are sort of, sort of for them with the, the national team who can help you know, improve and solidify what those leadership trainings have done. I've always felt like the liber you're right about the Libertarian Party really hasn't done enough to focus on younger people becoming, it, it, you know, Republicans and Democrats have poured a lot of money into those youth programs because they understand demographics. They understand that young people become older people. And while that seems pretty straightforward, we just haven't we haven't done a good enough job on, on that front as a party. To really attract in that attract in that young that young people because once you have if you can get people when they're younger you've got them for 40 50 60 years whereas if you recruit them to get older not to say that's a bad thing you've only got you know a few election cycles you know to, to go through um when you when you talk to people when you you know you you talk to them about how to message to other people are you um focusing mostly on but focusing mostly on how to reach other college students how to reach um, in their communities, kind of where, what's the focus on who you're trying to evangelize, if you will? Yeah. So obviously the primary focus for a, uh, a local affiliate is going to be at their college or high school. Those are the people that they interact with every day, the events that they're most likely to be tabling, all of that. And so we have sort of a line of, you know, uh, literature that's like specifically for that. So we have, you know, pamphlets and rack cards and stuff that touch on youth issues in particular that sort of stress, you know, oh, you know, these <laughs> $8 trillion in debt or, you know, whatever it's gotten up to now uh, might not seem, you know, might not seem like, I mean, it seems like a lot right now, but it might not seem insurmountable right now. But like, look at how fast it's been growing. Like, this is our future. Like, this is, you know, maybe it's not a problem if you're, if you, you know, are pretty old, but like, if you're, you know, 20 right now and you're going to be, you know, sort of working and in the economy for another like 40, 45 years, like what is this going to do to you? Like the runaway government spending, right? Like what is, you know, government intervention in sort of uh, like Middle Eastern affairs? Like what are our involvements in like the world in that entanglement? Like what are those going to be doing to you, like your future, how we're, you know, sort of jeopardizing, uh, you know, what what America has has built? And so, I think that that's, uh, that's all pretty like LYC specific. And so that's all LYC contained um, in terms of sort of evangelizing to or <laughs> evangelizing to uh, the broader population. Um, we're right now we're working on getting uh, the like the LP has a line of literature that I think are pretty good of like brochures and rack cards and specific issues. Um, right now, unfortunately, you have to like pay to get physical versions uh, because it's run through some sort of store uh, and you can't get PDFs right now. Uh, but we're pretty close to being able to get those PDFs from the LP and then just like self host them and people can like print them out and fold them and do whatever themselves. And if they want to like buy them like pre done or whatever, they can do that through the, through the LP shop. But there's really no reason to not um, at least have like the graphics hosted online so that our activists can, you know, print, printing them out yourself is a lot more efficient essentially. So we have anything that's like use specific, we're developing sort of in-house in the LYC. And then, you know, if it's, if it's more just general public, the LP has done, you know, a good job of getting all that literature. We just need to make sure that it's available to the young activists. Now, uh, do, do, when do youth age out? Is it just when you graduate? Um, you not necessarily. So our definition in the bylaws is really anybody under 30. Um, and so okay. that's to, that's so that anyone, you know, you're in high school, you're in college, and then you're sort of like in your early, uh, you know, professional life working uh, and all of that. And that's, you know, we don't, we don't want to have a hard cutoff at 22 or anything. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, in some ways it doesn't really matter because, uh, you know, like being a member of the LYC, uh, I mean, it means you're on our newsletters and stuff, but uh, the, the idea is not really for you to be like a member of the LYC or whatever. It's for you to be getting active in the party. And so once you've, uh, because, you know, all of our stuff is focused on campuses, um, once you're no longer in college, right, then you'll, you know, you can come to like leadership stuff and you can, you know, get support from the team and stuff as you sort of transition out of it. But, um, 
you know, the idea is that by the time you're reaching that, you're already, you know, in the party from your four years of working in the party just through the LYC. So it's sort of more of a, a conduit than anything, because I, you know, it, it is valuable. I think that the LYC is valuable insofar as it creates a separate space for young people in our party to make sure that, you know, their concerns are being taken seriously to make sure that we're having, you know, things geared at younger Americans, because, you know, marketing and all of that works very differently uh, among different age groups. And that's, mm-hmm. you know, making we have a presence on college campus. Like all of that's extremely valuable, right? But the LYC by itself doesn't like, if it's not supporting the party, then it's not supporting anything. So, you know, the age is 30, um, but that's, you know, not a super firm uh, age. You know, by the time that you're 30, you're probably basically just in the party and basically not in the LYC. Um, If you're over 30 and you want to help on LYC stuff, uh, there's no like provision saying that you can't like volunteer on the LYC national team or anything. Um, So, you know, the 30 is more just a guideline. Cool. What, uh, what states are you active in right now? Or how many, I guess, is, I don't want you to name out 30 if there are 30, but. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I could, I could pull up a list in front of me. Uh, but in the last, like, two months, uh, since, because we relaunched at the end of January, so, like, in the last, like, month and three-fourths, uh, we've, we have, like, 13 state affiliates, like, up and running right now. Um, and then we're working on several more getting teams ready, uh, you know, or working in some instances, we're working with people who are sort of like getting ready to launch them, especially sort of once the semester cools down, we have a few in the wings waiting for, uh, you know, <laughs> them to be done with their, you know, sophomore, or junior year, or whatever, then they're going to, you know, start it over the summer and like get uh, pounding the pavement in the fall. Um, for some of them, we're working closely with sort of like the state L- LP teams to, you know, get people interested who might already be in the party, whether they're, you know, just receiving emails from the Libertarian Party of whatever, um, or if they're, you know, coming to meetings or being a delegate at state conventions, stuff like that. Nice. Yeah. Do you do you guys have any, so you obviously you just relaunched everything at the beginning of the year. Where would you like to see at the end of a year, five years, 10 years, where, where would you like to take this thing? Where do you think it will go? What do you want to see in the next five years? Yeah. I think that the LYC really has the capacity to build an infrastructure rivaling, you know, young Democrats and young Republicans, because the problem is that that's all very self-perpetuating, right? Young Democrats and young Republicans gets, you know, a lot of money poured into them by the Democratic and Republican Party. And the reason that they have all that money to pour into them is because, you know, they're, they're, you know, more successful electorally. But the reason they're more successful electorally is because they've created this culture where you've got to choose left or right, even if you don't necessarily agree with it. Uh, so it's a self-perpetuating cycle, right? So the everything that the LYC does to sort of bust into that, a lot of which is sort of fundamentally at the college or high school level, which means that, you know, as, as much as the LP tries, it's it's never going to be as efficient convincing, you know, like 30-year-olds to switch political affiliation after they voted red or blue for 10 years than it is going to be to present those ideas as people are starting to vote, as they're starting to form political opinions. And so, you know, once you sort of start to break that cycle, once you have libertarian organizations on campuses around the country and kids are being exposed to the ideas, then the LP starts to grow, right? Then money starts to flow back into the LYC. And it's a, it's a virtuous cycle. And so that's, I, that's sort of the, the level of infrastructure that I think, you know, long-term the LYC is headed towards. Um, at the end of this year, I'd like to, I mean, ideally, I'd like to see uh, state organizations in, uh, you know, somewhere around like 30 to 40 states, um, you know, obviously some states are easier to do than others. You know, you get you get big states where like looking at New York during the relaunch and it was like, yep, we have someone from New York, <laughs> you know, looking at, you know, Illinois, oh, got someone from Illinois, right? Um, some of the other states are going to be harder when you look at a state like Wisconsin that doesn't have as many people, that doesn't have an active of an LP. That's going to be more of a challenge. Um, so right now we sort of have a, a priority board of states that we're reaching out to and making sure that we can get state affiliates set up in. And obviously we're going from size so we don't have a firm grasp right now on how many uh, state affiliates uh, is reasonable to expect by the end of the year, because we just don't know like how many sort of at the bottom are just going to be really tricky to get in terms of both LP size and then just population size. But 30 to 40 seems like, uh, you know, my best estimate for where we're, where we're aiming at the end of this year. And then, you know, in the next in the next five years, hopefully we'll have uh, state affiliates everywhere, um, you know. It'll be obviously challenging in a state that doesn't necessarily have an active LP, but you know, give us time and we'll make it work. I don't know that Montana has too many college campuses to uh, to recruit yeah. from, so though, something like that'll be be tricky. Yeah. That what? is true. University of Montana could be the the singular campus and state. It of might Florida. be. There you go. Um, what's the What's the biggest objection? Like, 
of the youths these days. I'm old enough to use that term, right? Of the youth these days. What what's their biggest objection when they We've aged we, out of the youth caucus, know, so I know it's 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 long past. Uh what's the biggest objection that you know your your affiliates are hearing that people object to them when but no, you know, you approach somebody on campus and start talking to them about liberty and freedom and things we believe in. What's their biggest objections that people are hearing? Or is it, you know, in my mind, I guess you think of, you know, the stereotypical Bernie Sanders fan on one side. And then on the other side, you kind of think of, um, you know, kind of a, a, a Ted Cruz fan on the other. I, you know, I, I t- tells you how out of touch I am with the youth. <laughs> yeah. Um, good, good question. The youths, as you say, um, you know, one of the biggest problems is really just sort of uh, electability. I mean, uh, you know, young Americans are increasingly worried about their future. I, I sort of alluded to this earlier, but, you know, obviously when, when we hear about these fatalistic narratives on the news and fatalistic narratives among young Americans who are worried that everything's going to crumble, I mean, yeah, part of that is that every generation thinks that, you know, things are going to hell in a handbasket, right? But, um, you know, I, I think that it really is becoming more and more true. I mean, the the numbers keep going up. The national debt keeps the polarization in our country is the highest that it's been since right before the Civil War. Like the the aggression of you know uh, people countries around the world that are you know responding poorly to American foreign intervention keeps going up. I mean, we saw the disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan, uh, you know, last year as a result of an American policy that spent billions of dollars, probably trillions, to replace the Taliban of the Taliban. And so you know, young Americans really see that the world is you know, sort of at a turning point that the United States is starting to lose a lot of that global influence, a lot of our economic influence. And it's because the government is really trying to suck it all up, trying to you know, control everything. And so I think that, you know, not, not that it's easy, but it, it's easier to convince people that a new solution is necessary, right? Like young Americans, you know, the, the Bernie Sanders fan, right? Um, you know, maybe they're maybe they're in favor of in favor of socialism, maybe they're in favor of, you know, whatever Bernie Sanders' dream is about climate change. Um, but it's pretty easy to convince them that the status quo is broken, right? It's easy to convince them that the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are just listening to their donors. It's easy to convince them that, you know, this is just going to get worse because if you like the same people of different rhetoric, like what do you expect? So on one hand, you know, that all of that's not necessarily too difficult, uh, not to say that it's not a challenge, uh, especially, you know, unlearning a lot of the, uh, you know, stuff that people have been taught at university and high school level about sort of the role of government. Um, so the bigger challenge is really um, in getting kids uh, excited about sort of, you know, the electability of the LP. And so that's actually where I think that the LYC is really useful, because if you just have an organization that's teaching kids about uh, liberty and students uh, and, you know, our place in the world and like how we can interact with our government and all of that. I mean, you might convince some kids and that sounds nice, right? You know, I like the, I, I like my individual rights. I don't want the government taking them away. Um, but then you just sort of see like this amalgamous blob of the LP and it's growing. Sure. It's seen it like it's the fastest growing party in the country. Uh, the Democrats and Republicans are shedding members, but you don't necessarily see sort of those tangible ways that you can uh, involve yourself in the same way that you, could see, I don't know, screaming on either side of the culture war on college campuses, for example. Um, but when you when the LYC sort of gives us opportunities to get involved, kids get a lot more interested, right? When you have, oh, not just you should believe in liberty, you should believe that, you know, we can change the problems that are plaguing our country and the world. We don't need to continue to be in this death spiral. And it's not just, okay, so let's go vote for the party that maybe has a chance in a decade if we all sort of like pitch in and build the movement. But let's like let's campaign for this city council can't like let's pass this piece of legislation. Let's see these tangible wins. Um, and so that's you know obviously getting kids involved with parties critical for the party's growth. But it's also important for getting kids to to vote for the vote for the party because not only are volunteers better than just voters, but they're more likely to be voters if you can get them to be volunteers. That makes sense to me. Yeah. Now, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go go for it, Danielle. <laughs> I was just going to say, I was looking at your, uh, your website and I saw you've got a lot of different advisors on your board of advisors. Um, and I just wanted to kind of ask how you developed that group of people or like uh, Jonathan is on that as well, Mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. (laughs) For better or worse. (laughs) Well, let's, let's hope for better. Um, yeah, uh, that's a good question. So the board of advisors, uh, so we, initially had, uh, you know, this idea for a board of advisors of people who could help sort of direct the LP or LYC in sort of long-term 
uh, strategy and help, you know, advise us on how best to integrate for the party and be, you know, advancing the broader movement. And we thought that it was important to really see sort of, you know, the leaders of the LP today, right? So we have, you know, the chair of the LP on it. We have the chair of the three biggest caucuses in the party, the, uh, the classical liberal caucus, the Mises caucus, the radical caucus. Um, and that sort of serves uh, two purposes. Uh, the first is obviously when you have, you know, the leaders of the party. And then we also have some prominent candidates and stuff who have done a lot, like Larry Sharp and Spike Cohen. You, you know, get sort of a lot of good uh, advice on like how, how best we can assist the party, right? When we're having like events that are candidate trainings or we're promoting camps or stuff like that, like how we can give our kids the best opportunities, how we can make sure that they're best aiding the party. Um, you know, if you want to make sure that the that the uh, competing visions for the LP are all, you know, making sure to uh, advance its future and invest in the next generation, you know, you better be uh, better be talking to the leaders. Um, but the also the other way is that the other uh, main advantage to it is that we've been really committed since the beginning. Um, to making sure that the LYC is really the next generation of the party for everybody. Uh, we are not, you know, the classical liberal youth. We're not the Mises youth. We're not the radical youth. We're not, uh, you know, whatever, right? We're the libertarian youth caucus. We're the youth of the party. People are welcome to join from any wing. Um, obviously, people, and including LYC leaders, are more than welcome to hold whatever caucus affiliation they want, make whatever statements they want, as long as they're not acting as, like, their official, um, their official position, right? Like, don't tweet on the LYC again about caucus stuff, but we're libertarians, feel free to have uh, your opinions on whatever. Um, but we want to make sure that, you know, this is going to be most effective if we make sure that everybody is on board. Because if your goal is to grow the libertarian party, then you're with us, right? Um, and so having, you know, advisors from all different wings of the party, not only make sure that we're sort of best aiding the party in whatever direction it's going in, that it also is sort of a, a valuable check just to make sure that we're not, you know, swaying towards one side or the other. We, we really want to make sure that we're not um, you know, we don't want to be tabling like a, just just the Mises events or just the classical liberal events or whatever, um, because that's, you know, it's going to push people away. It's going to make the message less impactful. It's going to promote the LP less, which isn't something that anybody of any caucus wants. Right. Um, and so I think that it's really those those two things that, you know, make our board of advisors pretty special. I was I was going to I'm glad you brought went into that, because I, one of the <laughs> questions I was going to bring up was how, you know, how do you navigate the 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 stressful and fraught waters of the LP right now. Um, yeah. But so I'm glad you answered that. But I was also going to ask, you know, have you seen a lot from the forward party? Is that, you know, I haven't paid too much attention to them, but that seems like a party that would be attractive to a lot of young people. Is that something you've run into a lot? Is, is that something you see much of on the campus or what's, you know, what's your opinion, your, your impression of that? Yeah. Um, so I have not, our affiliates have at least not reported very many uh, interactions with the Ford party. Uh, they're new ish. Um, you know, I personally don't really see them as much of a, much of a contender. They, you know, my, my personal opinion is that they marketed themselves as a party. They took millions of dollars of donor funds and then they donated it to, to Republicans yeah. and Democrats. Now they're yeah. calling themselves a party and they're running people who are also registered as Republicans and Democrats. Um, you know, I think it's a lot of great rhetoric bringing people together. There's a place for de-radicalizing our society or depolarizing it, I suppose. Um, but you know, this whole this whole notion of we're just going to create a party of like anybody who like want like you're yeah. you, a party of people who are in the party. There's no real unifying force, I suppose, except for being like personal fans of Andrew Yang, I guess. Um, you I know, guess. I guess they, I'm not I'm I'm not the I'm I'm not a fan of Andrew Yang. I don't particularly like his policy positions. Um I did appreciate somebody coming into the Democratic primary some business experience who's outside of the outside of the mainstream said, I see all these problems and here's how I'm gonna fix them. Um I don't think that Andrew Yang's party though is really I mean, I don't think it's a party. Um I don't think that it's really, you know, that serious. Uh, you know, they they post all these great membership numbers, you know, mostly because it's easier to convince people to register as Ford if you don't have to leave your party or vote for candidates that aren't Republicans or Democrats. Um, so, you know, I suppose we'll see. The 2024 election will be their first real test. Um, it is my personal opinion that pretty much all of their members will just go ahead and vote for whatever Republican or Democrat they're going to vote for anyway. Um, but I don't know. I will I will give the benefit of the doubt to Andrew Yang and his team, I suppose. Um, I'm always in favor of new third parties, you know, sort of trying to break up the duopoly. Uh, more, you know, I don't necessarily agree with them, but more power to them if they're trying to make a, a serious effort to reform the system. And I'd be happy to, uh, you know, see if there's any areas of collaboration. But, you know, at least for now, we're not too focused on it. Do you all work with, um, well, actually, I'll preface this with, 
I'm in Washington. The University of Washington was like the lowest, I think the second lowest on the free speech uh, list put out by FIRE. Are you working with them on any college campuses as the Libertarian Youth Caucus? Yeah, uh, so we're not currently working with FIRE and you sort of gotta be uh, careful a little bit in terms of like the filing requirements because the LYC is fi uh, excuse me, as an explicitly political organization, uh, which means that the LYC exists. We're not a political party, but we are a partisan organization. We're here to support the Libertarian Party, right? Uh, organizations like Students for Liberty or FIRE exist not as a political organization, but I forget exactly what the tax fine is. You'd have to ask our treasurer, but it's something along the lines of like a student advocacy educational thing, which means that they can't promote anything explicitly political. Mm -hmm. um, so far, so, you know, large scale cooperations between FIRE and the LYC would probably be tricky uh, because they can't really be uh, promoting any, uh, any of our stuff, uh, you know, we like a lot of the work that fire does obviously they're fighting for campus freedom getting rid of free speech zones you know all of that you know giving the right to hand out constitutions on constitution day I suppose i suppose that's a right that we have to fight for now <laughs> um i like a lot of the work that fire is doing um but you know any large-scale cooperation is hard but if there's anything on you know a campus that fire is doing uh lyc people are you know more than happy to uh, you know, I'm sure would be more than happy to reach out, help, volunteer, whatever. Um, it's just, you know, it's hard to do on a top-down level, but FIRE is a good organization. Uh, I'd encourage, you know, people to get engaged if there's like a FIRE advocacy uh, thing at their campus. Nice. Do you have any, what kind of, so, what social medias are you on? You want to plug some of those real quick? And, and I know you mentioned your website, but mention it again and throw yeah, people towards sure. your social media. Yeah, for sure. Our website is LY Caucus. So that's L Y, obviously, C A U C U S uh, dot org. Uh, if you want to join, it's slash join. Pretty simple. Um, on we are on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. On Twitter and Facebook, it is at L Y Caucus, L Y C A U C S uh, or C U S again. Um, on Twitter or on Instagram, it is L Y C Caucus. Um, very. There's a there's a long story there of Instagram, like. <laughs> There's, there's some Instagram glitch with their name. Uh, so if you don't see OIC caucus, then that means that we have probably fixed it and got an Instagram who has no tech support go. by the way to um, get us our name back. Uh, but for now, it's OIC caucus. So, you know. Yeah. Awesome. Danielle, did you have any other questions? I, I appreciate your time, Teddy. Yeah. It's been great. I For those who don't know, Teddy was very helpful in my debate prep uh, for the Soho Forum. He came up with a lot of the good the good arguments that won the debate. So I'm going to give a lot of credit to him uh, for putting that together and, and putting a lot of work in there. I, I appreciate his his hard work. And you were you were the debate champ for California, correct? Or your team uh, was? Uh, I'm not entirely sure what you're referring to, but uh, our championships are coming up. Uh, okay. Yes, like two weekends from now. But I am the top ranked uh, extemper in California. Okay. Which is a debate gotcha. event. Jonathan's a time traveler. He just forgot how far back I, he travels. Exactly, exactly. Well, <laughs> That's we'll, it. We'll, we'll see in about two weeks. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. Well, thank you so much, Teddy, for coming on. I appreciate it. Hopefully people check you out and take a look. I love what you're doing. I think it's it's really important to get those to get the youths uh, in, into our into our pocket as much as we can. So I appreciate your time today and thanks for thanks for all the hard work for Liberty you're doing. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Teddy. For having me.